should the Ravens sign free agent wide receiver Antonio Brown? Given Sammy Watkins' injury history and the Ravens' play style, could this strong running game actually benefit Sammy Watkins and his health moving forward? Are the Ravens' biggest issues really with the personnel? Or is it coaching? These and many, many more on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. Don't get mad, uh -huh. it's just what it is. What it is. Yeah, we talking sports, shout out to Graven Vance. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's St. Raven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subscribers. This is a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to based off of any NFL team and we answer it in a video just like this. Now, if you want to be part of NFL questions from subscribers, all the patrons, y'all send it directly to me on Patreon. Uh, everybody else, just send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com and we'll try to answer your question in a video just like this. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I, I really, really appreciate y'all. But please, please, please bear with me because questions from subscribers, we don't even get many chances to do uh, questions from subscribers these days because things are, it's, it's crazy busy. It's crazy busy. Um, so I know some of y'all might send a question and it might not be on an episode or whatnot, but just please be patient. And, and no, nobody has been complaining anything. But so you know what? I can't even say please be patient, but I got to really say I appreciate you being patient. Um, and I appreciate nobody like, ah, oh, where's my question? Where's my question? Nobody has been like that at all. So I love y'all and I, and I thank you for understanding that things are very crazy right now. Um, and question from subscribers, man, it has, uh, whew, it has been something over the years, man. I, I remember back in when we first started, we would do one question per video. Um, and then we sort of change it up and whatnot, but now it's to the point where we, we may have to make some more significant changes to it, uh, just to keep up with it because it's just been crazy, man. It's been crazy. We've been getting a lot of questions, but it's been so much going on in the NFL, even in a time like this, like I would have thought, okay, yeah, it's, it's going to be a little busy, but it's going to slow down. No, it hasn't. It hasn't. Um, but I love y'all and we got some great questions. So let's do it. Now, before we get into this episode, the date that I'm recording this is March 27th, and it is 6.04 p.m. So, first question. Keep that in mind moving forward. So, you know, we just signed, signed Sammy Watkins yesterday. All right, here we go. He said, Young Gorilla, and he sent this on March 20th, by the way. Uh, he said, what's up, Engraven? Oh, it's from Young Gorilla, too. See, I'm, I'm all over the place right now. Hope you're doing well and staying healthy. Been a long time. Uh, glad to see the hard work and dedication. Appreciate you, man. My question is, do you think we have enough cap to sign Sammy Watkins and Antonio Brown? Antonio Brown ain't happening. It's not happening. Um, I would love for it to. It's not happening, though. Uh, if you're a Ravens fan and you're holding your breath for Antonio Brown to join the Ravens, it's not going to happen. They, they, they had the opportunity to sign him already. They didn't do it. They had the opportunity last year. They had the opportunity this year. It's, it's not going to happen. He said, I understand they are both they are both still on the market. Well, now it's just A B on the market. Uh, and he said, uh, Sammy Watkins has already openly commented on a tweet about this exact move. Seems as if Sammy is open to join, and I think that would get A B on board if he doesn't re-sign with the Bucks, of course. Now A B could be on board all he wants to, but the Ravens, they would have to be on board with A B. And I don't think they are, so I don't think it happens. Uh, but anyway, he said, What's your thoughts on this? And thanks for answering my question. Uh, this is Young Gorilla. Woo woo! Ravens flock. Appreciate you, man. Next question came from my boy Lee P. He said, "Hey, bro, I like your thoughts on two wide receivers entering the draft: Warren Stewart and T.J. Vasher. Both are six six and around two ten uh, to two twenty, uh, and they are athletic receivers. I'm really high on Vasher, in spite of his supposed character issues. He got some moss-like traits. What are your thoughts? Oh man, six foot six. That's a big guy." That's a bit, and if they're both athletic, then man, because not everybody who's six six is athletic. Like that's that's a lot of height to be carrying around, and for you to be athletic with that crazy height like that. And these ain't basketball; these are football players, so much more physical too. Um, but it, and you said the, the the my favorite part about your question, you said moss like traits. That's my favorite part, moss like traits. Anybody that got moss like traits, because y'all, if y'all ask me. And I know some people be like, no, Calvin Johnson. Some people be like, no, T.O. Some people be like, no, Jerry Rice. If you ask me who I think is the best wide receiver ever in the NFL, I say Randy Moss. I say Randy Moss all day, man. That dude was just, it was disgusting what Randy Moss could do. Disgusting, in a good way. Um, and, but it, for me, I think it would depend on what round they were uh, projected to go in, well, what round they went in. 
if the Ravens were to draft either of the two, um, if they were drafted third round or later, I would just be very worried for them and, and for their development and whatnot and just for their what type of impact they could have on the Ravens. Because, again, Ravens, like, after the first and second round, really, the, the dedication to development is low. So that would just worry uh, me about them if they possibly did get drafted by the Ravens. But first and second round, if they can make it there, then they may be all right with the Ravens. Still be a little risky because, you know, when it comes to tall receivers, they like, oh, what do we do with those? What do we do with them? We don't know. But hopefully if they did get either one of the two, it could work itself out. Next question, well, more so comment came from my boy uh, Davion. Davion C. He said, what we need is Baltimore to sign Lamar Jackson if they want to make the playoffs again. Well, he's signed. He's under contract. But if you're talking extension, maybe I think actually to, well, they could get away and they could still make the playoffs if they sign Lamar Jackson to an extension. But then uh, the question would be, how would they build around him? How would they truly build around him? And so far, what they've done in this free agency, if Lamar Jackson got a contract extension, they could do everything that they've done this free agency with his contract extension on the books. Because, again, they brought back Derek Wolf. I think, what, a three-year, $12 million deal, so like four mil per. They brought back Tyus Bowser. I think he's making 5.5 .5 mil per. Uh, Kevin Zeitler, they signed him to, ah, uh, what was his deal? How much was his deal worth again? I forgot. But I know it wasn't anything crazy. And then, of course, uh, they also just signed Sammy Watkins to that one-year, $6 million deal. So they ain't been doing anything crazy. They ain't been spending any crazy type of money. So it's almost like they already did pay Lamar. Next question came from my boy Kenneth W. He said, Marquise Goodwin is available. I think the Ravens will reach out to him. He's 30 years old, uh, and the 49ers just cut him. I, I think he was one of the ones that opted out last year. Um, I No, I don't see the Ravens reaching out to him. But this, he did send this before the Sammy Watkins thing. So maybe that might have changed his mind by now. But no, I don't see the Ravens reaching out to him. And I, I didn't before or after the Sammy Watkins deal. Next question came from my boy Harry H. He said, how are you and the family doing? Oh, we good, man. Hopefully y'all and all the members of Team Keep It Clean are doing well. I know a lot of fans have been disappointed in EDC not getting the top target for Lamar Jackson. I'm upset that we didn't go after Corey Davis after seeing how affordable his contract was. Anyway, I was wondering, do you think the Ravens have faith in Hollywood and DuVernay, but are wanting to see Boykin compete with Kane and Victor for that outside spot? I mean, even though I haven't given up on Boykin, he is the weakest link, whether that's due to him or Lamar. Ooh, the end of that question, whether that's due to him or Lamar. And I think it's a little bit of both. Um, but... I do think that the Ravens, um, they, they definitely got faith in Hollywood. And DuVernay, um, by last year, and last year, I, the, the rookie receivers, they didn't have the, uh, the greatest offseason, of course. Um, but DuVernay, I think he's going to really fit into that Willie Sneed role, that slot guy. I think that's what they're hoping for. Um, Sammy Watkins would be like your outside guy. You can move him around. That's one thing with the Ravens receivers. Um, you can really move all of those guys around. You don't have to have a, a set guy on the outside and a set guy in the slot and a set guy. No, you can you can move those guys around uh, the field. So that's a beautiful thing. But now it's about the involvement of them. And, and like you mentioned with Miles Boykin at the end, um, he did say uh, Miles Boykin is the weakest link, and whether that's due to him or Lamar. Uh, as a receiver, I would say right now, yes, he is. But they really, really value him as a blocker. Now, it's unfortunate because, again, like we talked about before, it, when you're talking about a receiver, you don't want a receiver to be known for blocking. A receiver is supposed to be known for catching the ball, what he can do with the ball in his hands. But Miles Boykin is known for his blocking, so hopefully things can really change with that. And hopefully he can really um, – him and Lamar got to get on the same page. Uh, like Miles Boykin, I think the, the aggression, it has to get up. Lamar Jackson, his trust factor has to get up. And they, they really got to help each other out. They, they got to, man, because they started showing little glimpses toward the end of last season, but then it kind of like faded away. And they, they really got to start helping each other out a lot more um, because it's like we all been clamoring for this number one guy, this outside receiver, da 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 But Boykin, he's been there the whole time. Now, can he turn into that guy? That, that's the hope. But we won't know until him and Lamar really start like putting in that work together. Next question came from my boy Nick B. And again, this was before Sammy Watkins. He said, uh, Engraven, I've been patient and I'll continue to be. I like Rashad Bateman, but we need a veteran wide receiver. Well, boom, we got one now. Uh, but he said, we need someone that will 
tell Lamar, try throwing it like this. Look for this coverage and I'll do this, which is certainly what D-Hop and Diggs do for their guys. We also need a guy that can just say, they can't guard me, I got you. I know some Ravens fans are convincing themselves that we don't need a big-time guy, but I think uh, it's just a coping mechanism because I think Lamar needs it to become what we all know he can be. I absolutely love how he put this. I love how he worded it, and I agree with every single word that he put so far. And he said, to my question, do you think the Ravens' Brad sees it the same way, or do you think that they will once again go young? Well, they got Sammy Watkins. What? He's still young. He'll, he'll be 28 during the season. He'll be 28 years old. So that he's the oldest receiver in the room. That's crazy. Um, and then he said, I know Lamar faced pressure this season, but how often did we see Lamar extend the play, especially early in the season? Sideline to sideline and no one got open, resulting in a coverage sack. I just think a respectable receiver will relieve immense pressure from Lamar, J.K., Andrews, and Hollywood. What we invest in a true number one would be like paying for more production out of all of those guys. What's that worth? Ooh. Wow. This was beautiful. I love this. And to answer that last question, what's that worth? It's priceless. I hear so many people talk about, especially Ravens fans, because, again, we, we, we've been conditioned to be like, oh, that receiver costs too much. Oh, he's not worth that. Oh, this team overpaid. What is the value of having a successful offense? What's the value of that? What's the value of having an offense that can do it all, that can run the ball successfully and that can pass successfully too? What's the value of that? I'll tell you, it's priceless. It's priceless. There is no such thing as overpaying for a great offense. There's no such thing. And with the Ravens, again, we, we know how cheap they are at the wide receiver position, especially. Um, but And then they got Sammy Walker. They got him to a cheap deal. So it continued, but they just got to hope for max production. Like Ravens, really, they, they really hope to be uh, one of those, oh, Pay little money, but get super high reward. And, I mean, hopefully it works out that way with Sammy Watkins, but we'll see. We're going to see. Um, but, yeah, he could, the impact that he could possibly have if he becomes that guy. Now, I still think they should acquire somebody who is really like that guy and who has been that guy, who has been that real deal guy like recently. I really think they should acquire that. Um, because yeah, like you said, it would take a lot of pressure off of everybody. Everybody. <laughs> I love, I love this, how you put it, man. This was perfect, man. Oh, this was perfect. This was like too perfect, man. And the part about, I know Lamar faced pressure this season, but how often did we see Lamar extend the play sideline to sideline and no one got open, resulting in a coverage set. So Lamar would be looking for somebody to come open and nobody would. And then boom, he takes a sack. He throws it away, and it just results in a in a negative or, or a play that doesn't gain anything. So it's happened, but like my guy JT pointed out, man, Ravens need uh, playmaking receivers, guys that'll come back to the ball when everything breaks down. If Lamar facing pressure, guys that'll make something happen, like really, and not just guys that'll stick to the script. Like okay. All right, you're supposed to run this slant, and, hey, that, Lamar's supposed to hit you. Uh, if he don't hit you within five seconds, then this is, no. If you run that slant and Lamar's facing pressure and you see that, oh, all right, throw, throw the playbook out the window. I'm going to help my quarterback. I'm going to come back to the ball. I'm going to try to put myself in a position to where he can hit me and I can gain some yards. So that's what the Ravens need, and that's what Lamar Jackson needs. Is Sammy Watkins that? Let's hope so. Next question came from a brand new patron, my guy Ivan G. He said, this is something I posted on your recent video, so I'm just going to attach what I said. Great content, by the way, and I'm happy to be a part of Team Keep It Clean. I appreciate it, Ivan. Thank you, man. He said, great video as usual, brother. I typically don't comment, although I'm a diehard Ravens fan, Ray Lewis fanboy. <laughs> Uh, an option Ravens do have is trading Orlando Brown Jr. Although it sucks, we know he wants to be a left tackle. Use that trade to get a stud wide receiver and then use a higher end pick. Top three rounds to grab a decent right tackle. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I had to read it again. And he said, we can filter through free agency, maybe some picks, trades, or even draft some more young defensive players. And boom, we are still in the money. Considering we may be a great resurgence in the second half of the season with the Frankenstein O-line. <laughs> Hey, this could be something because, yeah, Orlando Brown Jr., if they do end up trading him, because they could end up keeping him. But if they do end up trading him, yeah, 
Go get somebody, like I said earlier, who's been that guy at wide receiver. Like he said, get a stud wide receiver. Stud wide receiver. And then use the draft to get, uh, what he said? He said use the, the top three rounds to grab uh, a decent right tackle. I mean, boy, that could, that could end up being Ty Phillips. Never know. Could end up being him. He could have been that replacement all along. And I know somebody brought that out before. I forgot who it was, but I'm like, wow, when they brought that out, I was like, well, that's a great point. Could be. Um, and then, yeah, you can get your defensive players, too, because you need some edge guys, man. You definitely need some edge guys. You're certainly lacking in the edge department. You know, yeah, yeah, you get me. Next comment came from my boy uh, Gareth C. He said, I just watched the Ray Lewis interview. Even he is trying to tell Stephen A. Smith, Lamar Action Jackson is going to win a Super Bowl. Let's go. And I know my guy, uh, Gareth, he was a little bit worried that the Ravens weren't going to land Sammy Watkins because he really wanted Sammy Watkins uh, to be a Baltimore Raven. But, hey, now you got your wish. Next question came from my boy Justin C. He said, just what they wanted. Yo, what's up, Engraving? It's your boy Justin C. And, man, it's so crazy how you caught it with Sammy Watkins for only six mil. LOL, such a Ravens move. Uh, but with him here and excited to see what he is able to accomplish in this system. One thing I wanted to ask really quick is given Sammy Watkins' injury history, but also the Ravens' history in recent years of not passing much at all, do you think our playing style will help Sammy Watkins stay uninjured and be able to provide more of an impact to the offense? Um, well, I, I see, I know a lot of people say that because they're like, hey, Sammy Watkins, if he's not catching as many passes, which he probably won't, then his body should be able to hold up a lot better. Well... While that could be true, another thing that you got to think of is the Ravens, they love to run the ball. And since they love to run the ball, that means that people got to block those defenders. So the wide receivers, they have to be physical in this offense. So even though Sammy Watkins wouldn't be catching as many passes as he normally would, he's still going to have to be able to hold up because in, in run blocking, so that's something that we definitely got to keep in mind moving forward uh, with the Sammy Watkins. Uh, and he said, I just think he'll be in harm's way a lot less and his skill uh, can make a bigger impact than expected. His years in the league playing with Giro before and having been in a high powered uh, passing offense like the Chiefs can bring certain knowledge to the table for other receivers here. I like that. That's a very, very good, very, very great points you brought out. Uh, love to hear your thoughts. And as always, keep up the good work. And like Sammy Watkins is with the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm out. <laughs> I like that, man. I, I appreciate that, man. Um, but yeah, man, that's I, I like how you put it. Now he had asked a previous question too. Um, he said the real issue. Hey, what's up, Engraving? I hope you got some rest. You've been spoiling us with the videos and live streams. LOL. Hey, I appreciate it, man. I just wanted to chime in real quick. I've been a Ravens fan since I was a kid. I've been around through so many changes with the team's personnel that it almost makes you not bothered by certain free agency stuff. Exactly. Uh, he said, now regarding this, it just sounds like from fans that they have no faith in the team and think that different players means better success. While there is merit to that claim, I find it superficial. Ooh, you coming with all these big words. And all, okay. <laughs> said, to me, the front office is great. The players are great. Execution and coaching to me are bigger factors than new players. Oof, that's, that's a very good point. I think they do go hand in hand. Um, but that's, this is great. You on a roll. I remember seeing a video that showed all the drops, not over and under thrown balls, but drops from our wide receivers this year. That clearly shows that despite having a run heavy offense and despite having a simple passing game and despite having a big name number one wide receiver, we could have gotten things done. And I don't want to sound crazy, but all of our losses last year were close minus the KC game. You know, even that game for like three quarters, it was close. Watching it live, you didn't realize that. I didn't realize that. And then I remember like the day after and the weeks after, the entire season after, I didn't realize that. But it was actually close. Like the, It's crazy. And he's like, he said even the bad Lamar game against the Steelers was winnable. So we should have or could have been 15 and one, a 15-1 and one team easily. Yeah, that Steelers game. I know that's, that's regarded as one of Lamar's, like, one of his worst games because he threw, I think, two interceptions. The one was a pick six on the first play, and the other one was a pass intended for Patrick Ricard where that linebacker just jumped it perfectly. Did he throw any other picks? I don't remember. Oh, he fumbled, too. He fumbled, too. But they still only lost the game at the literally the very end of the game. L literally the very last play on a pass to Willie Sneed. Miles Boykin was one-on-one, -on -one, but anyway. Um, they go that trust, that, that baby trust, but anyway. Um... Now, I think that 
the times we live in factor since no one wants to say someone isn't doing enough but our receivers and coaches ain't doing enough maybe we do need new players but they don't have to be big name guys uh just need to be willing and ready to put in 110 uh, percent boom sammy watkins now, so my question is really what are your thoughts on this is the front office seeing the picture clearly and no and know that we don't need new players we need better play from coaching and players or do you truly believe that the only way to get over the hump is that with the old and then with the new? Excited to hear your thoughts on this uh, as another Raven fan that just didn't spring up with Lamar Jackson. LOL. No disrespect to the Lamar bandwagoners, but as always, keep up the awesome work. Love the content and stay blessed. And he said, man, that was uh, longer than I thought. LOL. Sorry for the book. It's all good, man, because it was a good read. Um, I, I think it's a mix of both. Um, between it, it, You got a great point about the coaching. So that definitely needs to be improved um, because that's something that I, that I said too. the same thing that even if they went out and got some big time wide receiver, which I think they still should get, um, that if the coaching doesn't improve, especially on offense and the play calling and whatnot and the designs and all that stuff, if that doesn't improve, then it's not going to matter who's out there. Now, um, this is why I say that they should also grab that stud wide receiver because you can have somebody that is, has, is used to executing a lot better. Now, that's no shot at the guys that the Ravens have. But if you go out and grab that guy, then he will have ex been used to executing a lot better. And the, the moments might not be too big for him, too, like the playoffs and whatnot. Um, and also for Lamar Jackson. You're getting ready to pay Lamar Jackson a lot of money. You certainly are. And you really want to see, you want to get the most bang for your buck, don't you? So why not provide Lamar with the best, the best that you can? Why not? It just makes sense. Why not? Because you, you, you don't want to go into Lamar Jackson's second contract blindly. You want to know what he's good at. You want to know what he's great at. You want to know what he's bad at. You want to know what he needs to work on. You want to know all of that stuff. And you can't truly, like, they need to push Lamar to the max. The max. He's obviously been, like, this team's everything. And he has, like, completely, like, changed everything and he's not some it's, it's not a system that's making Lamar Jackson's be successful because if it was just a system then Trace would be able to do it too Tyler Huntley would be able to do it too and they haven't had like four games to do it I understand that but things would just pick up where Lamar left off at if either one of the two were to come in and it just it hasn't happened like that so I, that's why I think it's a mix of both personnel and coaching. A, a great mix of both. But the points that you brought out, they were A1. I, and I still ain't forget. We're going to have you on soon. Next couple of questions came from my boy, Rainmaker. Shout out to him, man. He said, um, it's funny, but I remember sending a question from a subscriber about Sammy Watkins earlier this year. And now we see what happened. He said, Engraver, hope all is, do is doing well. I wanted to expand on a question you addressed from me the other day about Miles Boykin. I think you and I are probably the only ones left who believe that Boykin can become a good wide receiver in this league. I said the other day that maybe he needs to be more aggressive in his approach to getting opportunities on the field, but maybe it just comes down to trust. When Hollywood first got here, he spent a lot of time with Lamar, and I'm sure by taking every day that they built up a trust with each other uh, off the field and it translated to on the field. Now, they're friends, though. They're friends, like off the field friends. And I'm not saying that Lamar and Boykin aren't, but Lamar and Hollywood, it's that South Florida connection. It's just different, man. It's just different. But Boykin, I'm not sure where Boykin is from, but it's, it seems to be a little different. They don't have that Hollywood and Lamar connection. Uh, but anyway, he said, I wonder if Boykin is really doing everything he can to get that trust factor from Lamar as well. He needs to challenge himself to make time to possibly build up a rapport uh, with Lamar uh, that could translate to the field. Just wanted your thoughts on the matter. Like always, keep up the great work. Appreciate it. I, um, yeah, they, see, it's, you can't, <sighs> I don't know what their relationship is off the field. I mean, we see Hollywood and Lamar relationship off the field. They're always together, always vibing together and whatnot. And with Boykin, you can't just, you can't necessarily force it off the field. You know, hey, what's up, fellas? I want to vibe too. And they're looking at you, each other like, oh. You can't force it, but on the field, um, just, oh, man. Like, he got to just bring that dog out, man. Talk that trash. And I think it should start in practice. It got to start in practice. But he got to get them the ball thrown his way. So really put it out there. And talk talk with Lamar. That's what I would suggest that he would do. Talk with Lamar. Like, if y'all in practice and it's your time for your reps, Lamar, look, man. This, they can't hold me. 
I don't care if it's Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters, Avery. I don't care. Even Marsh. I don't care who. These dudes can't hold me. Throw it to. I, hey, I guarantee you I'm going to take care of this dude. Hit me. I got you. And you have that conversation with Lamar whenever it's time for your, your reps. But make sure you also beat your man. And tell him, hey, even if you think I'm covered, hit me. Trust me, I got you. And you better be ready to moss all of them dudes, man. So he would have to make the most of those opportunities. And again, Lamar would have to give him those opportunities. But him as a wide receiver, present it to your quarterback. Be like, hey, hit me. Get me, man. You can't just, you can't just take the nice guy route. And just be like, okay, I'm just going to go out there, do my job, and hopefully he'll see me. Da, 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 da. No. Mm -mm. Not especially not in this offense. You, you want to take the nice guy route? You don't want to say nothing? You see Hollywood? Hollywood tweeted it. He said, hey, I'm letting the world know, man. <laughs> What's the point of having soldiers if you ain't, ain't going to use them? What's the point? You, <laughs> and not saying that it's necessarily the right way, but you can't be a nice guy, man. You got to let them people know, like, hey, I'm, I'm here, I'm with it, and I can make some stuff happen. Now, his other question. He said, so Joe Flacco <laughs> He said, so Joe Flacco signed with the Eagles. Don't take this the wrong way, but I thought I was done having to see him make rookie mistakes and rookie interceptions in his 13th year. Uh, since I live in Philly, I guess I'll be hearing about him again now. <laughs> Shout out to Joe Flacco, man. He said, great moment, my guys, I need a favor. Sarah Ellison just had a post for Joe Flacco. It was a lot of his greatest hits. About 85% of those highlights had Anquan Bolden catching them. I don't have any other media besides YouTube, no Facebook, no Instagram, no Twitter. Can you tell Sarah to give the Ravens a call to get a wide receiver so we can have some of those highlights with Lamar to his receivers? Uh, and he said, fill in the blank, whoever that could be. Those highlights just made me feel worse. <laughs> LOL. In all seriousness, though, um, that just brought to my real realization of what you can do with a true number one. And again, hey. We'll see if that ends up being Sammy. Now, you know, Lamar got plenty of highlights with Hollywood, too, and he's going to add plenty more to him. But let's see if he gets some with other receivers as well. Next question and last question on this episode of NFL questions from subscribers also came from my boy Harry H. Now, uh, this was contingent on the Ravens possibly missing out on Sammy Watkins. Uh, and if they didn't trade some for somebody like Allen Robinson or Michael Thomas, um, he said, should the Ravens take a flyer on Josh Gordon? Now, I know um, I talked to somebody else about this, too. And with Josh Gordon, um, it I, I said it wouldn't have hurt. And it would have been super, super, super low risk. Like, the deal probably wouldn't even be guaranteed uh, because of everything that he's been through in the NFL. But they can't right now because he's still suspended indef indefinitely. So he can't even play in the NFL if he wanted to, man. That's why he's playing with the... Uh, that fan control football league. I still haven't watched any of that. I, I probably won't. I'm not sure. But um, he's still playing over there. So even if the Ravens wanted to, they couldn't do anything with Josh Gordon. Next question came from my boy Taylor H. He said, do you think the Ravens could sign Larry Fitzgerald? Since he pretty much wants to retire, but <laughs> we could use him as a teacher to help out Hollywood and others. And also give Lamar a larger target uh, just for this year. Oh, that was one that I had definitely thought about, Larry Fitzgerald, because that would be very, a very Raven-esque move. Um, but that now that they signed Sammy Watkins, I, I don't think they will sign Larry Fitzgerald. I mean, never say never, but I, I, I don't think it. Now, Larry Fitzgerald could certainly um, have a positive impact on that wide receiver room and just the, the entire locker room, period, man. Oh, it, it, that'd be cool if they signed Larry Fitzgerald and he was like, look, this is my last ride. This is it. After this season, I'm retiring. And then all the Ravens like, oh, yeah, 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 okay, okay. And they went out and won the Super Bowl. And Larry Fitzgerald got him one because he ain't got one. <laughs> but anyway, um, I just, no, I, 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 don't, I don't see that happening uh, after uh, the Sammy Watkins deal. But Larry Fitzgerald, I mean, he could certainly help whatever he does to, for his catching. He could help all the Ravens receivers with that. Um, and just his longevity, too. His longevity, um, just his leadership. Uh, his uh, what seems to be a high high character guy, um, he could help in more ways than on the field. He could help off the field too, and, and that can go just a long way, not only with football but just uh, in life in general. So Larry Fitzgerald, I'm sure he will be more than welcome. Um, but with the part that would scare me uh, would be what you put about since he pretty much wants to retire. He, and he's still on the fence about that. He hasn't told the Cardinals anything yet, but the Cardinals are like, okay, you don't want to tell us anything? We're going to keep it going. A.J. Green, come on. We're going to keep this thing moving. 
whether, whether you want to play or not, we can't wait up on you. And they haven't. So um, if he's like so up in the air and on the fence about retirement, um, then maybe if he came to the Ravens, he might be playing half-hearted, man. And that'll be his first time out of Arizona. Oof, I don't know, man. That it would just it would be risky. But hey, you gotta take risk in business, right? And now the last question on this episode of question from subscribers came from my boy John R. He said, Do you think with the Sammy Watkins deal that the Ravens will be forced to use him, or is he not that big of a sign and they won't really have to use him? Ooh, I love this question. And this is something that we talked about when it came to them signing a wide receiver or drafting a wide receiver. The pressure that's put on them when they make that move. Now, with them drafting a wide receiver, if it was a receiver drafted in the first round, then I think that that pressure would be up. Sammy Watkins deal, a one-year deal worth up to $6 million. It's a one-year, five-mil guarantee. The one mil, the rest of that is incentives. So this is a super, super, super low risk. So while they're not necessarily, they don't necessarily, uh, they're not forced or pressured to use him, I think they will because that's, right now, he's their answer. Right now, he is Ravens' answer to their problems. I'm not saying he's going to fix everything, but that's how the Ravens answered the wide receiver question this offseason. People said, okay, hey, who are we going to get? Allen Robinson, they've been the Devontae Parker talk, they've been this, they've been that. Ravens said, Sammy Watkins. And everybody was like, oh, okay, cool. Let's see how it goes. But I, I just, I don't see anybody that, um, I haven't seen anybody with any like crazy expectations for Sammy Watkins or anything like that. He is definitely an upgrade, and especially with his experience. Um, for as long as he's been in the league, um, the type of receiver that he's been, and what he's accomplished as a receiver, uh, especially in the playoffs. And that's, we definitely need that. Because it can't be Lamar and playoff Hollywood all alone. We need more. Um, and this also... This is a part of the, the, the designing of the plays, the schemes and all that. All this stuff goes hand in hand. But with his contract, yeah, he's not, it's not like the Ravens, are, oh, man, we paying this guy all this money, so he got to be that guy. No, it's not like that. But because of the situation, I think he will be heavily involved. That was a really good question. I thought that was the last question, but then I found another one. Shout out to my guy, Oscar L. He said, what's going on in Graven? First of all, thank you for being so active and dedicating so much of your time to team. Keep it clean. I'm not sure when you do the next episode of Questions from Sales, but I was wondering about the draft. There are so many needs on this team, such as D-line, O-line, receiver, outside linebackers, and a few more in my opinion. With that being said, do you think we should go the best player available route, especially in the first few rounds like we usually do, or should we go off of need? It depends a lot on the OBJ situation for me, but I think we should go O-line regardless in the first round. Appreciate you. No, I appreciate you, Oscar. So thank you. Um, you are... Whew. You you don't want to go f draft for need. Now, it is possible that when you do BPA, it could fill a need, but you don't want to necessarily draft for need. Like, like Ravens, they're, they're – and even though you do say, oh, yeah, we're going we're gonna BPA no matter what. We're gonna, you, you do still draft for need, and, oh, and you don't draft for what you don't need. Like, for instance, Ravens, if it's the first round and they pick 27 or wherever the Ravens end up picking in the first round, if they even stay in the first round – but say, for instance, they stay at 27. If it's 27, 27 pick, Ravens are on the clock. They're not going to take a quarterback. We know that. What if the quarterback is the best player available? They're not going to take a quarterback. They're going to take something that they would actually use and they could actually need. So even though it is best player available BPA, it still does have something to do uh, with need. Um, so uh, it's, it's a good, healthy blend of both. Now, uh, if you, like, and even if, if it's the first round, Ravens on the clock. If a running back is there, best running back in the draft. <sighs> you know what, for that one, I, nah, I don't think the Ravens would do it. Well, with, with running backs, you can never say never. You know, Ravens, they, they love to run the ball and love the running backs. But, nah, I, I don't think they would do that, man. Not in the first round. Um, so, it again, like I said, it'll be a, it'll be a healthy mix of both. Um, it'll be the best player available, but it'll be the best player available that fits what the Ravens need at the time.